Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator, political scientist Tony Stewart, in welcoming today's guest. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing a series of programs. In the first programs, we're going to talk about certain issues that relate to men. And uh, later uh, in this program and, and other weeks, we're going to deal with some women's issues. Uh, all of these are very important to our people. And today, we open up with a program called Creation-Centered Spirituality for Men. Uh, this is part one of a two-part series, with next week being the conclusion. It is so much a pleasure on my part to welcome to the program Richard Coles who is a businessman in Kootenai County. In addition to his work in real estate, he has been on many uh, volunteer boards, such as Hospice uh, of North Idaho. He's also served a, a distinguished time on the, uh, the Post Falls School Board and many other activities. And he is really a key person in relation to this particular issue and a retreat that's held on from time to time. Richard, I've known you a long time, and we commend you for all you do, and we thank you for being on today and next week's programs. Thank you. It's good to be here. And as always, I'm so pleased to have our regular panelist, Janelle Burke, who's an attorney in the state of Idaho, and she will commence today's question on creation Center spirituality for men. Welcome to our program. It's interesting to me that this title is called Creation-Centered Spirituality for Men. What does that mean? What does creation-centered spirituality mean? Uh, goes back to the Bible. Uh, traditionally, religions have uh, emphasized the fall of man, uh, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. The creation-centered uh, spirituality looks at it a little differently. They see the primary action of Genesis as the action of God creating, uh, actually loving this world into existence. Um, creating something that was sacred to God and consequently sacred to us. And so the, the emphasis there is a more of a positive uh, approach. It says, emphasize what God has done rather than the flawed things that man has done. And are you looking at all of creation, not just humans, but uh, all of the other things that make up our world as we know it? Uh, the animals, the, the beautiful surroundings that we live in, are, is an emphasis on those things as well as on the human uh, in this program? It, it really is. There is um, a spirit in each person that we all acknowledge. We call it a soul. In, in uh, creation-centered spirituality, what we are trying to do with our retreat is get to what we call men's hearts. But there's also a, a common, at least I believe, there's a common male spirit. Um, we believe that, uh, that men are priests. W frankly, we believe that women are priests as well. Um, that we are prophets, that we are warriors, and that we're kings. And if we see ourselves on the sacred level, then we have these gifts that we can use to, to make the world a better place. But the, the diff most difficult thing for men to do in this world is uh, to get away from the pressure and to get back to their heart. And the stress of making a living, the stress of achieving, of, of being successful, um, and getting into the routine of life. So the retreat is all about stepping back from that, going to an incredibly beautiful place. I don't know if you've been to Camp En Sid Sen, but it, um, it means point of inspiration, and it's an old Indian word. And what we do is we use traditions, sayings, and uh, music from various cultures uh, throughout the world. There's, there's no restriction here on, um, uh, the, for example, the, the Judeo-Christian approach. We might, we might look at Rumi, uh, we might look at a Buddhist, we might look at the American Indian tradition. And we use uh, those traditions to actually inspire us to come together 
That's really what it's all about, to establish our own personal relationship with the Creator and then to share our experience, our lives with the other men and it creates community. It's I'd, absolutely beautiful. I'd like to ask you another question, but I, okay. uh, then I will ask you about your facilitator. With Tony's permission, I'll ask you about your facilitator. Of course, you have to have someone who's going to come and lead this, this process. And so your facilitator comes from another area. Can you uh, tell our viewers something about your facilitator, please? Sure. Brother Joe Kilikevich is a Dominican brother who is uh, stationed or located back in Chicago. And he is the originator and um, manager of the Shem Center for Interfaith Spirituality. Um, and what, what uh, his realization uh, early on in his career was that we, religion has a tendency to be a little exclusive that we say, uh, most religions will say, well, you have to go this route. You have to do it this way. And his realization was that there are many paths and everybody is on their own journey through life. And he has a respect for that. And uh, most of the men who come have a respect for that. So there's no restriction on your belief system. Last year we had uh, an atheist come to the retreat and I don't think we converted him to anything. There wasn't any attempt to do that, but um, Brother Joe is very open. That what he brings to uh, the retreat is first of all a, a deep spirituality of his own. Most of us are not, um, uh, we don't meditate. We, we find it difficult to find time to do that we're so busy with our daily lives and it is one of the uh, commissions of his uh, ministry to find time to be introspective and to look at himself and to pray for himself and for others and to use that time to develop his own spirituality. In addition to that, uh, he is uh, a musician. He has an extremely nice voice and he is uh, talented at getting the men to sing. And if, you, if you're familiar with any of the male choirs, uh, it, it is absolutely beautiful, especially when you hear four-part harmony. I mean, we have the Lake City Harmonizers and some of the groups here that are doing that, and it's, it's really beautiful. But the combination of music, singing, and then we put that together with dance uh, steps, and those steps are from the Dances of Universal Peace, which uh, also there's a, a whole uh, worldwide movement, and the goal of that movement is to, is to create a peaceful world and a peaceful society. I, I will follow up on that uh, to some extent. I also want to say to our viewers that recently you had a retreat. Uh, it was February 27th through March 1st, and this show's airing after that. But it is our assumption that you'll have other retreats. This is not the first retreat mm -hmm. you've had, so uh, I will ask them to put up on the screen uh, both, uh, I believe, your email, and then there's also a website they could look at. Um, one of our purposes in our program is always to give our viewers the opportunity to be in touch with whomever our guest happens to be if they have interest in that subject, and I, I see that the website is up now. Um, but a little bit more specific about uh, when you have these days together, and it appears it's about a four-day retreat, uh, do you, do you, how organized is it, uh, being such a structured person <laughs> myself, like teaching a class, but uh, is it somewhat free-flowing, or do you go through different processes? Do you have um, certain um, times uh, for, one might say, uh, for your meditation, and other times when you're together and, you, and you're speaking of these issues, and other time you're doing music and dance? How does this all integrate together within that four-day period? Okay. We, um, we arrive at Ensid Sen any time after noon on Friday afternoon. And there is a, a meal at 6 o'clock. And then at 7.30 we have a session. And it's a chance for uh, people to understand what the retreat is going to be, how it's going to be, proceed, and, and what the expectations are. Uh, it's also a chance to begin the process of um, music and dance. Uh, and it's a chance for Brother Joe to let us know kind of what 
what his goals are. Usually there's a theme to the retreat that um, it, it might be, um, in this case, it's uh, getting rid of those fears that we have. Um, it might be journey. It, there, there's a, a kind of a process that we go through. And that's all established on that first night. The camp itself is extremely uh, good. The meals are fabulous. The, the accommodations are wonderful. The men are comfortable. Um, it is a camp, and it's in, in this area in the w in winter time. You never know what to expect in terms of weather. Um, Saturday morning, we get up fairly early. I think the seven o'clock or seven thirty is the first uh, gathering, and I think we eat a really good breakfast. And then uh, there are uh, Brother Joe has uh, what, what am I thinking of the uh, certain things that he does habitually, like there'll always be fire. A uh, candle of some kind. Um, there's a real emphasis on the, on nature, on on the natural, and, and we're in a natural setting, and getting back men back to being able to share with each other. So there's opportunities within the circle uh, to share experiences that we have with our lives, how we're doing, and uh, uh, no one is pressured to do that. But there's always the opportunity to share. And the relationships that are established uh, in those first two days uh, between the men as a group and even individuals that, that just find something in common. There's, there's uh, time for recreation. I think uh, both days, Saturday and Sunday, there's a two or three hour period where we break and you might play basketball if the weather's decent. You might uh, just take a walk along the way, lake or a hike up into the hills. and. Um, I think that the, it's, it's very hard to explain what the result is because what you're really doing is, is be, first of all, beginning to relax and really relax, and then understand that nobody has any expectations of you. Nobody is expecting you to, to be a certain way and to achieve a certain goal. You're just there. You're yourself. Richard, you've done a very good job explaining how this process works. Uh, for our viewers who don't know, you and your wife, you have uh, you work in business together, and so you have a wonderful working relationship. And uh, I have a two-part question. After going through this process, uh, not only you but others, does that create a more of a? Uh, not only is this retreat about how men are dealing with their fears and how they open up, and, and men in our culture are not as open as women tend to be, but does it affect a? a improve relationship with your wife, for example, or better understanding women. By knowing yourself better, does that also <laughs> build a bridge to the other gender? <laughs> um, in, in my case, uh, I think if Jean were here, she would uh, say that um, yes, very much so that she's really excited about the person that comes back to her from the retreat. and. Um, other men who've been there report the same thing. Um, Brother Joe, one of his uh, themes is uh, he gets reports all the time from women that, that uh, where the women will say, I, I don't know what you received, but what you sent back is much better. And, uh, and I think it's really true that um, if you have a person who is more relaxed, uh, in fact, one of the difficulties that we have is Monday morning after when we're finished with the retreat, there's a fairly windy road back from high, along Highway 97 from Camp Ensign Sen. And you have relaxed so much that somebody, you're driving along at 25 miles an hour instead of 45 <laughs> miles an hour, and you might find somebody on your tail honking their horn, and, and it really is an adjustment coming back into a society that is so fast-paced, where speed and time is money, time is, is everything. And so here you are suddenly in a relaxed state, and, and uh, there's a real culture shock coming back to it. Thank you, Janelle. First of all, I want to let our v viewers know where Camp Edson Sen is. Uh, would you tell them, please, where it is? We've, we've talked all around it, and we've said it's beautiful, mm -hmm. but tell us where it is. Camp Ensign is um, just south of Carlin Bay on, on the east side of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Right. And it is north of uh, Harrison, the little town of Harrison. Um, it's probably five minutes from, from each 
So it takes about 45 minutes to get there from Coeur d'Alene. And so it's a beautiful spot. Now my second part of the question has to do with why do we need to do these things? What is it that's caused men in our culture to feel so stressed? Why do we need to have these kinds of time set aside to really examine our relationship with creation? Um, you know, you're asking um, an amateur <laughs> a pretty heavy question there. If, if I'm understanding you correctly, why do we why would a person need this? Yes, yes. Why do we need to do these kinds of things? Because I think it's not just the, the people who are going to go to this, mm -hmm. this um, retreat who are going to be feeling the same kinds of things. But I think a lot of men in general feel, and women too for that matter, feel very pressured in today's society. That's true. I, um, I think, what, what is the movement? I'm forgetting the name of it now, but it is a, a national religious movement. Uh, where they bring men together to be fathers, to be better fathers. Promise keepers. Promise keepers is what I'm thinking of. of and I think the uh, response to that program, I mean, it's been amazing how many men have come into that and come out of it with energy and strength um, because that's exactly what it does is it gets them back to basics, gets them back to what it means to be a human being first a good husband and a good father. And uh, I think that's a portion of what we're trying to do, but we probably spend a little bit more time on uh, reflecting on who we are and what our relationship is with, not just with family and, and friends, but our relationship with the, the earth and our relationship with uh, our perception, at least, of the Creator. And earlier in your presentation with us today, you, just a couple of comments that led me to this question, and that is that, I, and, and I don't want to read something in that I shouldn't, but certainly sociologists and psychiatrists and, and um, psychologists and many people who study human behavior talk about gender issues. And so I, I thought I heard you saying that uh, part of your retreat, and you understand, could be, uh, at least in our culture and the way young girls are brought up and young boys are brought up, that. Uh, there's some gender differences and so would you take a little time to explain to us why you think uh, we, we mentioned already on the show that um, that in our culture women seem to be more open in, with their feelings than men are on, next week I'm really excited about that show because we're going to deal a lot with a list of fears that men have that you have shared with us but just give us some comparison contrast between uh, women and men as it relates to society in general well what I'm not an expert on this, but one of the things that I have noticed in my own life um, is, that, is that establishing relationships for me, I, I can do that, for example, playing tennis or uh, going to a movie, um, but I find that women uh, are much more able to talk to each other uh, about what's happening in their lives. It, it, they strike up conversations very easily. and. And those conversations go on for long lengths of time. And uh, frankly, I find myself uh, struggling to compete with with the with the women, and that and it obviously it's not competition, but to to do the same thing. Um, so I think women are just more naturally kind of gregarious, more more naturally open. Uh, obviously, that's not universal. We're all unique, but. Um, for men, there's almost a, a basic competition that's set up uh, as, soon as, you, as soon as you address the other person. You're thinking a little bit, um, how is this person going to receive me? And, and you're not, ne not necessarily trying to beat them, but you're, you're wondering how you're going to be received. And, and uh, I, th I think with women, it's a little bit, uh, unless they're competing for something or somebody, that it's a little more natural. So I hear you saying that men, when men in conversation with other men, it's a more restricted conversation. Most of the time it's more dealing with business or uh, maybe sports, whatever it is, that they're not as willing to get involved in a more uh, intimate spiritual feeling that, that, and women are easier at that in, in women's relationships. I have found that to be true. Uh, Jean, my wife, for example, has friends who, and Jean will say, you know, people tell me things 
that I'm surprised that they would reveal. That, I, that doesn't happen to me. I, I find that the men that I associate with, and, and we, we talk about sports, we right. talk about movies that we've seen, we talk about books that we've read, but not necessarily about our personal lives. So you're so right. So your feelings are not as easily expressed as women in expressing feelings to one another. Uh, that their, their relationships may be more meaningful uh, from that perspective if mm -hmm. you're dealing with mo the more internal process of yourself and your feelings. Exactly. Janelle is, is here and Janelle could certainly add to that and I'll, I'll yield to her and also to her next question. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to change the subject well, a little before bit. Before you do, yes, I, I okay. think that your point is well taken that intimacy is uh, a hard commodity to come by and I think we need it. I think that's one of the things the Creator was hoping that we would discover, not only in our spouse and our children, but in true intimacy isn't physical. True intimacy is really a, a mutual understanding that goes far beyond um, what, what we may perceive as a culture, what intimacy is. And we get so much of this stuff from Hollywood about what intimacy is. And intimacy is, is connecting and finding trust, finding the other person's heart. Um, uh, just a brief story, I was in a Catholic seminary for the first nine and a half years of my life from after eighth grade. And during my college years, they had me go out and t t do what they call take census. And that was going around door to door and, and talking to families. And most of the time, this was in the daytime, most of the time I would find the woman at home and uh, we would talk, and of course, there were very personal questions that were being asked in the census. And frequently, I would be told by the woman, well, I go to church, but my, my uh, husband finds God in nature. So he goes out into the forest, and he does what his idea of prayer is. He does that in the forest. And of course, as a representative of the Catholic Church, I was committed to say, no, you have to go to church on Sunday, your husband has to go to church on Sunday, and that's where you find God. And I really am rethinking that in the context of what we have now. Thank you. It's, it's all been very interesting. I want to talk a little bit about the singing, because there is, uh, as a musician, a, a, a specific quality of sound, very beautiful sound, to a boy's choir or to a men's choir. Uh, if you will, that is, you can't reproduce other ways. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the music that you sing, and do you know the music before you get there, or is this something that you kind of learn together? We learn it together. Now, people who've been on several of these retreats will uh, r recognize some of the music, and they'll be able to um, almost lead the other men. But no, Brother Joe is extremely skilled at teaching us not only the words, for example, I'm forgetting, but I think the, the, in, the, in the original prayer of the Our Father, um, there is a phrase, Abum de Bwashmaya, which is Ara Ara Aramaic. And we use, we use that phrase and put it to music and then put it to steps. And uh, it, it's, it's very reverent. Some of the music is, is more uh, upbeat. joyous and upbeat, but, but there, there are things that he teaches us in terms of the words and the notes, and we have people who are, uh, perceive themselves. I don't think this is fair uh, assessment, but they perceive themselves as tone deaf, but they sing, and it, it's beautiful. So it, 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 nobody's embarrassed to be there and to be singing, and the music is, um, yeah, it's completely taught, uh, and the steps are taught, and the, the, the uh, words are taught, so, and you just, you just, by osmosis, you learn it, and it's, it's um, as I say, it's very hard to describe what happens. And it's very moving to hear people all singing together. Mm -hmm. Music is very moving. Yeah. One of Brother Joe's goals is to have the retreat large enough. Right now we have enough people to have one circle. It, it, all of this is done in circles, and uh, most cultures, past and present, have what, some form of a circle dance, whether it be square dancing, folk dancing, 
uh, in our culture. The Indians did circle dancing. The, uh, the uh, Hebrews did uh, circle dancing. You find it in Africa. You find it in almost every culture. And what they've done is they've taken the best of that and put, taken some of the words and, and put those together. And Joe does a fabulous job of uh, helping, helping us to understand what we're doing and then having it be a unifying experience. It really brings us together. Um, uh, people who go on a retreat trust the other person that's on the retreat. It, it just, you, you just reach that place where you, you have this built-in quality of, of spirit that you, you're, you're, you're one. It sounds like that I believe kind of Brother Joe has this ability to uh, start off the whole process by trust. To communicate with anyone, uh, we, we've all been told by people who are much more knowledgeable than I that trust, of course, is essential to that process. So for that retreat to be successful, for that communication to be uh, to progress in the way it does, there has to be a lot of trust. And it's, it's not a put down uh, how mm -hmm. one sings or, or any of those things, uh, it sounds like, in relation to what you're doing. You bet. You, you begin to get a sense of what the sacred is. And you see the sacred in the other person. And one of the nice things is that you also make that transition from the other person being sacred to yourself. And then you realize that, it, you're, that being a priest means that you can make things holy. And that you do that by intention. You do that by, by wanting whatever you're involved with to be done with some sort of sensitivity, some sort of recognition that this is a, a privilege that you've been given. The chance to, to live is a privilege, and the chance to be involved with other people and, and to be in experiences. I got to, on that note, bring the program to conclusion. But the good news is that Richard, you'll be back with us next week, and we will do part two of Creation Center Spirituality for Men. It's been such a privilege having you here on this program. We look forward to next week. And on that program for our viewers, we really are going to emphasize some of the fears that men have, such as being rejected or abandoned or hurt or, or judged uh, and uh, being inadequate and all those kind of issues. And I hope you'll be with us again next week, and we'll continue this very, very important subject. That, uh, and I'm sure that you will want to follow up, and we would help you tell your friends. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. Recorded on the campus of North Idaho College, Public Forum is the longest-running in-house college production on PBS. Each episode is pre-recorded live and is an educational outreach from North Idaho College. Please join us at this same time next week for another edition of Public Forum on this public television station.